Hi, I'm Lou, another episode of My Car Store. I'm here with Tom Lumbeck. Tom, good to see you again. Great to see you again, Lou. Always good to have one of Tom's cars because you know it's going to be one of the best Mopar cars of all time in the world. And you're thinking to yourself, Lou, that's a pretty big statement. But today, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. Tom, what do we have today? Today, we have possibly the rarest Mopar ever built, a 1971 Hemi Cuda convertible, four speed in Winchester gray. <laughs> and this car wasn't even known. I mean, give us a little of the backdrop. I'll grab the camera as I usually do. Thanks, Joey. Go ahead, tell me a little bit about well, this. Well, previous to like the early 90s, they thought there were seven heavy, Hemi Cuda convertibles in existence. This car wasn't even on the radar. It wasn't even a known 71, car. 71, right? It's 1971. Yeah, okay. So they didn't even think this car existed. They were unaware of the export vehicles that had gone to France. Wow. So. This car showed up in an advertisement in a Colorado muscle car newsletter, the Rocky Mountain you know, muscle car newsletter. And uh, one individual, Dean Prodromides, saw it along with other people and it said BS27B1B instead of R. So it was supposedly a Hemi convertible, but it had the wrong uh, VIN code and it signified a six cylinder. So everybody just kind of blew it off and just said, ah, it's a six cylinder clone. I don't want anything to do with it. It's gray. But Dean had a suspicion that something was up with the car. So he called the overseas number and he got a guy in France and the gentleman insisted that it was a manual shift Hemi. Wow. And he kept saying in his broken accident, accent, uh, yes, I swear it is Hemi, it is manual shift. So. He caught a plane there the following week and went to see the car, and lo and behold, here was a 1971 Hemi Cuda convertible, build sheet, four speed, uh, you know, in the south of France. <laughs> and the story was the guy bought it, and he had the, you know, the paperwork and the VIN, and everything matched up to prove it. Now you're a huge Cuda guy. How'd that all happen? I, how'd you how'd you get stuck with Cudas? And you have several of them. Uh, my love for Cudas started in 1979 at the University of Illinois. I went to see a P51 Mustang fly in Danville, Illinois, and in the hangar was a 1970 Lemon Twist Hemi Cuda, and I just uh, my mind just was blown by the just the amazing motor and the and the body of the Cuda, and uh, I fell in love with them. And let's take a look at the one you love. Come on back with me. So here's the forgotten Cuda, the forgotten Hemi Cuda, still with the plates from France. And you've had this car for how long? I've had it probably 16 years now. 16 years. So. And there aren't many of these around, period. No, there's three four speeds, and uh, I think they're up to nine automatics, so 12 total cars. And uh, there's only three guys in the world that can lay claim to owning a four-speed Hemi Cuda convertible. So here is the one of three four-speed Hemi. And Winchester gray, you know, when you think of gray, you think of kind of a plain, you know, color that doesn't have a lot of pizzazz. But Winchester gray has got a little bit of a metallic. It's got some blue. And depending on the light, whether it's sunny, whether it's overcast, whether it's early morning, whether it's you know, early evening, the color is always changing. So, uh, it is a really, yeah, it almost has a blue tint. We have the sun on it. Let's move back. Come on with me, Tom. And let's take a look at the car. We've got it in the light for you so you can see that. Got a wonderful day here. I'm just going to let you meditate on that. I mean, when I first saw the car, uh, it did not have the billboard on it because only one of the 12 Hemi Cuda convertibles in 71 were ordered with a billboard, but that was an option you could get. And I, I just pictured putting the billboard on and it would look just like uh, a Barracuda from the salt water because that's what they look like. They've got the silver and the blue, and when you pull them out of the water, that's, that's how they look. So it's a, it's a true Barracuda Barracuda. It's a true Barracuda. That is the, to me, that is the ultimate color of a Barracuda is kind of a blue-gray, silver, you know, with the black combo. Because that's what, a, that's, to me, that's what a saltwater Barracuda looks like. The 71, highly desirable because there were much fewer of those than the 70s. I want to get that door. Tell me a little bit about some of the unique uh, options this car has. Well, because it was ordered to uh, overseas to France, the Europeans like power windows. Uh, they did not order a power top. They love manual shift. 
So most of the cars over there were four speeds, manual shift as the gentleman described it. And the rally dashes in kilometers. And as any, anyone who's ever driven over there knows the speed speeds in kilometers. And Let's get all of this. And I think the gentleman had the same kind of epiphany that I did when I was, you know, in college. He saw a Hemi Cuda. I guess he was over here in the States and he saw a 70 Hemi Cuda and he just said, you know, the thing's amazing. And so he ordered this 71 Hemi Cuda convertible with these options and in this color. And it just looks great. Now I'm noticing too, there's no, there's no radio. Radio delete because uh, overseas they, they have to, um, I guess the antenna was mounted on the rear quarter and they have a different radio system and wave frequency. The Barracuda and the, the convertible top, all the details there and the, so to speak, hand handles. And the part number. And you can see the details to the convertible top. And the convertible top is really nice. Really nice. Let's, uh, let's open up under the hood. Let's take a look. We go there we go let me I'm gonna actually walk around the engine then we're gonna take a look at the the uh, build plaques Sh show me that the, you showed me something interesting over here on this fender yes Tell me when what the that car is. when the car comes into the country like when it came into France they uh, at the customs they scratch the serial number of the car into the inner mm -hmm. fender at first I thought that was you know done afterwards or that was something need to be covered up but that was done as, you know, the car was imported into the country and the customs did that to uh, register the car, verify the car. See the, uh, the Plymouth export plate that the cars that were sent to uh, Europe had. And this is not the original fender tag. I have that at home in my safe um, for safekeeping. This is, you know... The rarity of some of this stuff on cars is rare. If I take it to a show, sometimes I won't come back you know, with it. I won't come back with it. And it has power power brakes. Power brakes, power steering. And power steering. It's a 354 Dana car. Uh, back in the day, the guy uh, replaced the rear end with 276 gears. The, s the speed limit's a lot higher up in France, so okay. he wanted to go faster. He had to go 100. <laughs> 20, 30. I mean, the fastest I've driven is 135 miles an hour. In a very safe area, my yeah. dad's on. Okay. Right. And then <laughs> but he, you know, he changed the rear end so he could go much faster. Right. It, you know, the speed is... You know, Some the... track that was made for that. Right, exactly. Well, in, in exactly. Europe, they drive fast. Well, yeah, no, in Europe. We're saying when you drive at 130, it was on a safe track. Yeah, of it was course. on a safe track, of yeah. course. So, so then now, uh, here's the shaker hood and the huge opening. Let's start her up while we got the hood open. Doesn't get much better than that. Let's put the hood pins on. Let's shut her, put her back together. If you love muscle cars, Tom, and I absolutely do, Tom, it is a pleasure and a treat to again have another one of your fantastic cars, one of your Hemi cars on our show on My Car Story. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. You're welcome, Lou.